Hello, and welcome back to my calculator tutorial series. As always, we start by turning on the calculator, fresh new screen, and just like last episode, I'm going to create a new program. Same format as last episode, so we'll just do Z, episode, not episode theta, but episode 3. And today we're just going to co cover just a couple more things for content that we'll cover repeat, increment and skip, decrement and skip, um, more about labels and go-to statements. And if we have enough time, we'll go into some more I.O. things. But let's just go right into it. So how about when you start this program, we'll put a... We'll repeat. And what you do, after you put repeat, you have to put a condition. Now, in the previous episode, I show you what while does. What while does, you know, first it tests the condition right when you start. But when repeat does, it runs it always once, and when it's done running, when it gets to the end statement, then it checks. So we're going to repeat. Uh, what we're going to do before we repeat, we're going to do... That's not what I wanted to do. But we'll do 1 equals x, or we're setting x to 1. And we're going to say, let's repeat while x is less than 10. And then what we're going to do here is another new thing, which is, appears as IS, which stands for increment and skip. And there's also DS, which is decrement and skip, which is just the opposite. So what increment and skip does is that um, it tests something. And what the first thing you're going to do, you're going to put the variable you're testing, which we're testing X, and let's just put 6. So now, what the first variable is, of course, the variable you're testing, and six is what you're testing against. If six is greater than or equal, if x is greater than or equal to six, it'll do the next line conditional, which we're gonna put another new thing. A lot of content fillers today, and we're gonna do go to. Um, we'll just put a. Well, actually, we'll just put something a bit more. We'll put empty. Labels can be um, one to two characters long. It can be any letter or any number. But we're going to go to, you have exactly one line that it can do if it's correct, and exactly one line you can do if it's not correct. So if x is less than 6, we'll just do x, we'll do um, x plus 1 equals x, which is just erasing skip. Then, of course, since it's a loop, we have to put end. So what happens, it's going to keep going through here and doing that until x is greater than 6. And then what we're going to do, since when it is greater than or equal to 6, it's going to go here. It's going to completely exit and go to a new label. So now we create that new label, and of course the label's name is going to be NT. And what we're going to do, we're just going to do display, like I showed you in the last episode, and we're just going to display X. So now this is a very simple program, obviously. We just quit and run it. And it prints out 2, which is completely not what we wanted it to do. Um. <laughs> So, okay, I think I might know what's wrong now. Let's just go back and edit it. The repeat x is, yeah, so it repeats until this is true. So we want to repeat until x is greater than 10. Because what you know, it repeated until x was less than 10. It did it automatically once, even though it was true. When it got to the end, x equaled 2, and it was like, hey, um, <laughs> The condition is true, so let's just exit, and it just automatically continued along the program. Labels and go-tos are just things to, like, skip around the program, but in the pro type of programming that calculators use, it just goes straight down of how it's going unless it reaches, you know, a loop or a conditional or most jumpy are the go-tos and labels. So now, um, what I'm going to do here is just a control F, which is just quick for stop. So it's going to stop the program there if it ever gets there. So it just doesn't continue onto the label. So now we're just gonna run that again, and we got two again. That is not good. Don't know why. So x equals one. You repeat until x is greater than ten. Yeah. Yeah. So x is not greater than ten, obviously, when it starts. Okay. So what I got wrong was the increment and skip. It does this value, it does um, this if the value is less than or equal to, and it does this if it's greater than. And also what I forgot 
was just you don't really have to put anything here. We'll just put um, because what increment and skip means it automatically increments x. But so if x is great, so what we want to do if x is greater than six, we're going to go there. And for the first line, if it's less than or equal to six, we're just going to do um, display. And if x is greater than 6, then we're just going to go to this and print out x. So now, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be mad. Perfect. Oh, not perfect. <laughs> Displays, nope. This didn't work. It said, and x still isn't greater than 10. Maybe some debugging. We can print out x. So that prints out the command if answer is... This is the command. That, ha that executes if x is less than or equal to 6. This is the command that executes if x is greater than or equal to 6. We're just going to insert a line here, and just for debugging purposes, we'll say... We'll just... We're just going to say hi. A nice, polite thing to do. So since now, we know it didn't get to hi. So that means something is either wrong with the repeat which I doubt, you know, repeat, repeats. It goes through always once, and it repeats until this value is true. X is not greater than 10 at all. So what's happening is that increment and skip. X is not greater than 6. So it displayed X, first of all, because of that. Um, so when it gets to end, it should just be repeating. But, well, it didn't get to high, so that means it did go to NT either way. So what I believe, it's executing both of these commands for whatever reason. So let's just put that there. And it should be an interesting result. Yep. Just kept repeating hi. Well, because x wasn't incrementing at all. Because what we did just there... We just say, hey, do that if that's that, and that, and that if that's that. <laughs> of course, that makes sense. Let me just go over here and see if it works again. Yeah, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But now it's printing it all the way. So what happening? What is happening? That I did not expect to happen, because I don't have that much experience with increment and skip either way. Because, honestly, um, increment and decrement and skip, those um, aren't very useful since... They're basically they're like a condensed form, but basically what's happening? These two lines are the ones being controlled by the increment and skip function. But uh, but uh, so when it x is less than that, it executes this, and then it just goes on down the line, including um, this one. But when x is uh, greater than six, it just skips this one completely and goes to this one. So what we need to do now, okay, okay, so that means we just need to do uh, something else that we want to do. So now we're just going to do um, something that we want it to happen both times if it's greater than 6. Well, okay. We're just gonna do display. Um, we're just gonna display x here, and then here, we're going to display x is less than six. And we can take this out, and this should work. This should um, work fairly well. Well, it should be pretty intuitive x is less than 6, x is less than 6, and, you know, suddenly x is less than 6. So now we get it. That is, of course, a weakness for the increment and decrement. I'm not going to show you decrement and skip since it does exactly the same thing, except it decrements and also checks if the answer is greater than or equal to the first value. Or, and it checks, if it runs this, if it's greater than or if um, the variable x, it can be any variable is greater than or equal to the value, and this runs if it's less than the value. So it's the exact opposite in both inequality and the increment-decrement thing. 
So now we have um, labels and go to's and such covered. So now we can, let's just, uh, what else haven't we done? Okay. Now another thing we can do is, you know, if we did this, if we, like, ran this program, it'll just give us all that stuff. And now if we tried to do x again, x equals 11. Let's say we wanted x to be cleared in case we wanted to use it again when it was done when we were done running this program. Oh, I did not want to press that one. Just go all the way down and we'll insert a line. And let's just do delete variable x. It just erases it from system memory. So if we ran this and we this that this time it should perfectly, you know, delete x. So if we run x, it didn't do what we wanted it to do. Label and wait, it, um, oh well, wait, it's not going to that label. I'm just gonna delete that. There, now it should be perfect. So at the end, it should display 11 twice, and it did. So now, if we access X, it's zero, not 11. It deleted it from system memory. So that's another useful thing. Now I think real quick, we'll just do um something pretty easy. Regarding that, we'll just um take the rest of this out. And sorry that this I will not be like posting this calculator code online on like my um previous series. Because you know that's just unintuitive. But now we'll just do um display graph. Now um of hopefully you know how to actually uh display how to actually, you know, on your calculator go to y equals and set up, you know, a graph. Here's like log base three x plus two, and that just happens to be the graph for it. Now if we went into a program and we want to display a graph from a program, then what we can do is, uh, we just, well, yeah, we can do display graph. It's the big thing. So, let me just go here. Okay, it just it just displays the current graph. I will also go over the pause command. Yeah, that'll be easy. Okay, so basically it displays the current graph. So right now, if we went to I/O and we went to display graph, you know, cool display graph, and what happens? It'll probably just um, well, it should display the graph. Here, it displays the graph. But you know, if we just displayed the graph, it all it does is bring up the graph. Nothing more, nothing less. But what if we had stuff to execute after the after that? So we went display x. So now if we ran this, we'll get, you know, a quick graph, which just, like, flashed instantly, then it displayed 0. So what if we wanted to wait for it to display the graph? Then in here, we'll put a nice command, and it's called pause. So now, you can, there's also an argument, like a time argument, you could put it, but we'll just do pause without any arguments. And we should be able to execute this. See, it displays a graph. Now, what it's doing right now, it's waiting for you, the calculator user, to press enter, and it'll continue on with the program. So you can put that anywhere in your program if you wanted to pause and wait for the user, well, probably you, to use it. Now, what you can also do is display table, which is like display graph. If you don't know the wonders of the table, if you do second graph, it'll bring you to the table of the current graph, and it shows you the x and y charts for it in all current graphs. But now that we have that in, we can do 3. It'll display the table. You can explore it, but since it's paused, we can press enter, and it'll continue on the program. Ta-da! Let's see. Now, if you just wanted to um, edit the current graph, which is certainly possible. I believe you would do. You would have to get at y1. So in order, wait, I'm trying to do that. There we go. My apologies. It's a lot of content in this episode, but of course, content is always good. Let's see, that's not it. I'm trying to see. Well, let's go to catalog. 
catalog. If you do second zero, that's the catalog, and it shows you every single character you could you can possibly enter on your calculator. As you see, when I sift through these, it's a, a ridiculous amount of things. Like, truly. And I think if I press Y, it'll try to bring me somewhere. I'm not sure. But either way, we're looking for a Y. There weren't any Ys, unfortunately. I know there's a way to access Y, however. So, that's L1. Those are lists. What we want is Y1. We might be able to do that. Let's, no, those are plots. Let's do plot one. I have no idea what this is going to do, truly. It's always worth a try. Error. Okay. Yeah, that's a bad. Okay. <laughs> Errors are bad. Just saying. Okay. Okay. I guess that's it for this episode. Now, next episode, I will be uh, showing you more, a lot more about all the different things you can do with um, input and output. You know, you can look down this list. There's a, a good amount of things you can do, including um, getting get and send. But we'll go over more about that and internal execution of other commands and how to return from those and some other things, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, as always, I enjoyed this episode because I enjoy teaching you how to use things. Okay, and good programming to you.